New year, new episode of the Everything Series. Welcome back, everybody. It's me, Waddles. In this week's addition to the Everything Series, things begin kind of sad, actually. Here we are, inside of the Everything Series world, where we've talked about everything so far. From iron farms to skulk sensors, this is a really special world. But this time, this time it won't work. Because I don't know how to turn on experimental features after making a world, the dream of today's episode, the Chesil Bookshelf, it's not here. So, we have to move on, because of the Chisel Bookshelf, over here in this old world, oh, this is definitely here. The Chisel Bookshelf, let's talk all about it. Traveling back a couple months now, a side note, wow, to Minecraft Live 2022, the Chisel Bookshelf was one of the very first Minecraft 1.20 features that we got a taste of. The Chisel Bookshelf is one of the oldest, most requested features of all time. For those of you out of the loop who may be living under um, a normal bookshelf or something, well, the Chisel Bookshelf is essentially a bookshelf that you'll actually be able to put books inside. Maybe I'm easily impressed by things or something, but I don't know. If you ask me, this is some pretty mind-blowing stuff. This is almost like the very first item in a long time in a storage update, overhaul, or something like that. When I was planning out this video and the order I want to cover the topics, it got me thinking and uh, think about storage items that we have in the game. Of course, we have the chest, so normal, ender chest, trap chest. We've got the barrel in 1.14, but when it comes to storage, Chisel Bookshelf is the first edition in a long time. It's kind of exciting. Anyways, back to Minecraft Live. When the Chisel Bookshelf was revealed at Minecraft Live, it was actually a little bit different. Texture-wise, exactly identical, but functionally, you had to load this thing from one side all the way down to the other side. Doesn't work like that anymore. When it comes to a little bit of the devs thinking behind the addition of this thing, roll it. So basically this is where you're going to store the stories of your world. Personally, I'm really excited about it because as a player, I love telling stories about my game. And I used to keep it in a physical notebook just next to my game, uh, my, my computer. But recently, I started writing it in the world, sort of storing it in chest. And you know, that was actually inspired by you, Agnes, and your amazing world. Yeah, and Agnes. <laughs> Aesthetically, the Chisel Bookshelf, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but at least to me, this is one of the most beautiful looking things and sounding things in the entire game. So, uh, listen, listen, I don't know if you could hear it, but when you walk on it, it's like a unique wooden hollow sounding sound, which is pretty cool. When you interact with this thing, mm-hmm, pretty new and fancy. And then when you place this thing down, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I know the devs are stepping up. They're sound engineering, but like, it just sounds so good. Like, so good. Yeah, please, somebody, make sure I don't feel too alone. And if you're a fan of nice sounding sounds like me, then leave a like on this episode. It'll help out huge time, mentally and physically. <laughs> All right, so anyways, the Chisel Bookshelf. Like I said in that little historical lesson that we did a second ago, it's for storing books. Inside of one single bookshelf, at least as of the recording of this video, you can store up to six individual books inside of this thing. Now, these six books can be any combination of different books that you'd like. They could all be enchanted books. They could all be normal, plain old books. They could all be written books or a book in Quill as well. Any type of book that is in the game can go inside of this thing. Now, the Chisel Bookshelf has six different slots. We have slot one, two, three, then four, five, six. If we go ahead and interact with slot one, as you would predict, a book goes into slot one. If I interact with slot one while holding a different book and one's already in there, the book will come back out. But hold on, hold on. We're getting ahead of ourselves. All of this is great, but before you can experience the greatness, you've got to craft it. When it comes to crafting a chisel bookshelf, it's pretty similar to a normal bookshelf except minus the books. Inside the crafting table, with three planks there and three planks there, and then some slabs in the middle, you'll get a chisel bookshelf. As of the recording of this video, the chisel bookshelf is technically still in development, so any of this stuff could change, but right now, you can mix and match wood types as well, including the slabs. So go ahead and put the items in the crafting table like that, and there you go. You've got yourself one brand new fancy chisel bookshelf. Then you could go ahead and load this thing up all the way. Once you place it down, though, let's say, I don't know, I didn't really want to put it right there. I wanted it over there on that wall. If I go ahead and break this thing, we're going to want to use an axe. Using an axe is going to make it a little bit faster. 
However, just like with a normal bookshelf, if you break this thing without silk touch, the bookshelf breaks. All of the books go on the ground, but not the shelf. So let's go ahead and run that one more time. We put the chisel bookshelf back down and maybe load it up a little bit and grab our silk touch axe. With the silk touch axe, when we silk touch this thing, the books will still pop out. But the block, it'll pop down on the ground too. So that means, unfortunately, though it would be really cool, this isn't going to be an easy way to compact books down into your inventory. They will not stay in the shelf. Initially, when this thing was added to the game, you could actually interact with any side of the chisel bookshelf and you were able to drop things inside of it. Nowadays, if you interact with the back, the side, the top, the bottom, nothing will happen. And to actually put books into this thing manually, you'll need to look at the front. The texture of the books, like the coloration, will be the same every single time. So as you can probably tell so far, when it comes to the chisel bookshelf, a lot of it is all about brand new functionality in the game. A bookshelf that actually stores books. However, there's a whole lot more to this bookshelf than you would maybe think. If we go ahead and place this thing down on the ground and hook a comparator up to the back of this thing, initially we're going to get nothing, like there's no signal coming from it. However, once I begin to interact with the chisel bookshelf with some books here, we're going to start to get a signal. The comparator will output a signal that is equivalent to the slot number that you interacted with most recently. So uh, again, the six slots, one, two, three, four, five, six. That means if I interact with this one right here, that's going to be a redstone signal of four coming out of this thing because I interacted with it most recently. Then after that, let's say I interacted with number two, that signal is going to switch over to a two. Interacting with one right there, then we're down to one. Then let's say, I, I don't know, I pulled the book out of slot four. We're going to jump back up to four because that was the most recent interaction. All of that means that the strongest signal you'll be able to pull out of this thing is going to be six if you interact with the last slot. Over on Bedrock Edition now, Redstone can of course be different on Java and Bedrock. However, this time around, that is fortunately not the case. The Chisel Bookshelf, or at least when it comes to the Redstone mechanics and interactions behind it, they're going to be exactly the same on Bedrock Edition. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to the different types of books that we have in the game, so, you know, book and quill, a normal book, enchanted book, signal strengths are going to always be the same. The different type of book does not change the signal. If I put this in slot one, we get a signal strength of one. If I swap that out for a plain old book, it's going to still be a one. If I swap it out for a written book, finished or not, it's still a one every single time. Theoretically, if you were to swap this comparator out for, let's say, uh, just a piece of plain old redstone and then try and interact with this thing, nothing will happen at all. And the same thing with a repeater. Hook it up to a repeater, it doesn't work. You will need a comparator hooked up to the back of this thing if you want the signal. No, well, actually, correction. Uh, correction. You could have a comparator hooked up to the side of this thing and you will still get the signal. And you could have a comparator hooked up to the front of this thing and you will still get the signal as well. A comparator hooked up to a block that is sitting below this thing or on any side unfortunately it doesn't work long story short here as long as the comparator is physically touching the chisel bookshelf you'll be able to pull a signal out of it next up we're still on the topic of redstone here i'd like to talk about some interesting redstone interactions that the chisel bookshelf has so uh first things first chisel bookshelf right there skulk sensor right over there if i go ahead and put a book into the chisel bookshelf the sensor knows if i go ahead and give it a second let it cool down and pull that book out the sensor will also know now the output strength of the signal that comes from the skulk sensor when it hears you interact with the book, it's going to be the same every single time. I mean, like, for example, let's say I interacted with slot number six. That's going to be that signal, which is really, really strong. And then I interacted with number one. And it's going to be the same strong signal. How about our good old classic friend, the hopper? The hopper and the chisel bookshelf. Do they work together? And so, as you might remember, unfortunately, you cannot interact with the top of the bookshelf. It will not work. However, our good friend, the hopper, the hopper definitely can interact with the top of the bookshelf, and it will work. When you use a hopper with a chisel bookshelf, it will fill in this order. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six every single time. Now, the order is not affected by where you put the hopper. If you put the hopper over here, you might think uh, lining up with the bottom row, it'll fill up the bottom row first, but that is not the case. It will still go from the top all the way down to the bottom. But when it comes to our sweet friend, the hopper and the chisel bookshelf, it doesn't end there. Check this out. Hopper on the side still, but now I have a chest and a hopper down below. If I throw a book into that side hopper, there is no book in the bookshelf. There's nothing. This hopper interaction is going to be near instantaneous every time. 
Now, of course, if you're Redstone Big Brain here, you could go ahead and level this up even more with a hopper, hook it up to a comparator or something, and maybe detect the interactions going through this thing. The most recent interaction will be detected by the comparator if a hopper does that interaction as well. One thing to note about this hopper interaction thing, though, when the chisel bookshelf is full. If I go ahead and fill this up from the bottom manually so I end up with a signal strength of 1, add a hopper to the top of this thing, and then try and put a book in the hopper and fill it up, because I interacted with this last one, even though you would think the hopper would try and put it in the final slot, we get no change because the bookshelf is full. Then if I go ahead and pull that one out right there, drops it into the second slot and, and you get two. It kind of all behaves exactly as you would expect, but I don't know. I figured I would throw it in here. Maybe that's useful information to you. In what order will the hopper unload the chisel bookshelf, you ask? Well, it will unload it from first all the way to last. Hopper minecart. Hey, it's pretty similar to, to a hopper, you know, hopper inside of him. And check this out. Look at what we can do with the hopper minecart. Maybe we set up a, like a rail line right down below this thing and then load this thing up a little bit. If I were to say, uh, take a hopper minecart and push it underneath this thing, maybe bounce it off of the wall. When the hopper minecart goes underneath the bookshelf, it grabs the books. Oh, and it's so quick too. Did you see that? Watch what we can do here. Let's say we have this hopper minecart on a full power. Like we got it really, really fast and we move it underneath this thing. When we move this thing quick enough underneath this thing, we only get two. So you move it faster, it picks up less because it's underneath the bookshelf for less time. And if we move it really, really slow underneath this thing, we can get this thing to pick up every single book in one go. All in all, this specific interaction is gonna get pretty advanced. You can mess with your minecart timing here and pick up more books or less books. Perhaps, so let's say we had a hopper minecart on top of this thing with some books inside of it. Well, it does not load. Hopper minecart cannot put in, only take out. But then again, that is kind of just how the hopper minecart works. It doesn't drop things into a chest. Hoppers are pretty cool, so are droppers. What happens when we put a dropper facing directly into the chisel bookshelf? So the dropper facing that way, chisel bookshelf right there, books inside of this thing, and power. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Every single time we power this dropper, it's dropping the book right into the chisel bookshelf. Interesting. Thinking about this and the hopper, hoppers always go down. Droppers can actually go up. If we put a dropper right below the bookshelf and then again, books inside of this thing and power it, it'll start filling the bookshelf. When a dropper fills a bookshelf, it will always fill it again from number one all the way to six. Droppers look pretty similar to dispensers. Do we have a dispenser interaction with the chisel bookshelf? The answer to that one, my friend, is going to be no, unfortunately, this hoe. I feel like the dispenser sometimes is maybe a little overpowered. It can literally do every single redstone thing in the game, but not this one. The black and white, all of it's black and white because this next one is sad. It's so sad. And the chisel bookshelf is kind of like a chest. You store things in it just like a chest, a piston, plus the chisel bookshelf. Nothing. It does not work. You unfortunately cannot interact with a chisel bookshelf with a piston or a sticky piston. The sticky piston cannot push it. It cannot pull it. It does not interact. Oh, that's so sad. All right, and I think I've maybe covered most of them. A couple final quick interactions here. Uh, the note block with the chisel bookshelf like that. Nothing at all. But if I go ahead and, you know, actually place it the right way. You get the bass sound, and that's pretty cool. The chisel bookshelf and the composter, you might be wondering about those two. Well, they actually have no interaction whatsoever, believe it or not. I know, yes, yes, very, very interesting. The chisel bookshelf, if we were to go ahead and put the chisel bookshelf right there, the TNT right there, and then a target block right there, and then hit the target block. Well, uh, the chisel bookshelf's interaction with TNT is... It gets blown up. And chisel bookshelf plus TNT equals explosion and no chisel bookshelf. So with all of our interesting redstone interactions and functions uh, done, dusted, laid out in front of you, let's talk about a couple ideas for the chisel bookshelf. Of course, Minecraft is a game where you can do anything that you want in the world. I've got three different kind of like categories of ideas for the chisel bookshelf. Idea number one is really straightforward and super, super obvious. They actually showed it off in Minecraft Live. You use the chisel bookshelf to build a secret door. So, unfortunately, this thing doesn't interact specifically with the sticky piston. However, you could do the comparator paired with maybe a specific book or something to unlock a secret door. A couple weeks ago, I dropped a video talking about cool redstone contraptions that you can build. Inside of that video, I talked about a super useful locked chisel door mechanism. 
This mechanism requires you to interact with a specific chisel bookshelf and you'll be able to unlock the door. This mechanism also comes with a very, very simple locking mechanism as well. So like once you go through the door, you can go ahead and close it from the other side. If I interact with three right there, the door opens, I move in here, I go ahead and press this button, I put a book back in the bookshelf so you would never know, and I hit that, and the door is closed. For more on that specific circuit, check out the redstone video after this. I'll leave it on the end card. The secret doors are great and all, but maybe you're just not really into redstone. Well then, building. Building is definitely a potential use for this thing because the texture is so good looking. On the side of this thing, we get these squares. It's really, really nice looking. Build a big wall out of it. On the top of this thing, you get this really, really interesting looking pattern. <sighs> Check that out, that's great. Obviously, being built out of oak, it's kind of asking to be paired with oak, but you could of course pair this with anything that you like in the game. After all, Minecraft is Minecraft. You, you build with whatever you want to do, I don't know. But uh, maybe a cool pattern like this, this could be pretty nice looking. Or, of course, you could just do plain old planks. The chisel bookshelf, because it is crafted out of planks and slabs, yeah, it, it'll be a little bit more expensive, but if you're trying to go all out, maybe a storage building or something, yeah, yeah, you could definitely make a really, really interesting looking floor. I personally love this thing with the stripped wood. I think the stripped wood with this stuff, it just looks so cool. It's so interesting. I actually don't think I've shown it in the whole video. The bottom of this block, what does it look like? Well, it looks pretty similar to the top of the block. In fact, exactly similar. One wall idea that I had with this thing immediately though, is to take this thing and flip it backwards or sideways or whatever, side and the back are the same textures, and then you get this. So that's gonna be the bottom of the wall. Then what I could do is go ahead and build up on this wall and put something else, you know, not the chisel bookshelf, and all of a sudden, you end up with paneling or wainscoting at the bottom of your wall right there. That could be really, really nice, especially if you're trying to build like a cozy house or something. It's almost too bad that the chisel bookshelf doesn't come in different wood variants, like this but in spruce. Ooh, chef's kiss, chef's kiss. Or man, oh, mangrove, yeah, it's beautiful. Three is a good number, so I'll go ahead and leave you with one more idea. Coming full circle, back to my sweet, my lovely everything series world. Inside of this library, a library. You could, of course, use the chisel bookshelf, and not only for empty bookshelves inside of your library, but also functional storage. Storage, the chisel bookshelf. That's probably where the idea started with, with the developers. A way to actually put your books away in a smart way that makes sense. Use your chisel bookshelf inside of a library, inside of a stronghold, inside of anywhere to spice up that storage situation. And so, that's the chisel bookshelf. Everything to know about this thing, at least right now. Keep in mind that this thing is an experimental feature. It is in development. It's not fully out quite yet. Once this thing is fully out, it might end up changing. If it changes big time, I'll make an updated guide. If it changes small time, maybe I'll leave like a pinned comment down below or something. Check it out. Down below the video, conveniently, is the like button. And take a quick second and please uh, tap that thing. It helps me out huge time. Subscribe for more. If you know how I could enable experimental features in my uh, Everything Series world, then please let me know about that down below. And thank you all for watching. This has been me, Waddles. Go have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone.